For this and for all of my discussions of the reading passages on the SAT, be sure to have your official SAT study guide in front of you. We'll be working from the second edition of the College Board's Blue Book, and we'll be looking at practice questions related to all types of reading passages. Hello. In this video, we'll be talking about vocabulary and context questions that show up on the reading passages on the SAT. As the name of these questions implies, vocabulary and context questions ask you to define the meaning of a specific word in the context of the passage from which it's taken. Now, the strategy here is a little bit counterintuitive, but if you understand and are familiar with the word in the question, don't pick the normal definition of the word for your answer. That's what the in-context part of vocabulary in context means. These questions are not asking you, what does this word mean? But rather, how is this word being used in a very specific place in this particular passage? Let's have a closer look. Here are some good tips to remember when you're attempting to answer vocab in context questions. Treat these questions like sentence completion questions. Sentence completion questions, I hope you remember, are the fill-in-the-blank questions that test your knowledge of vocabulary on the reading section of the test. All of the strategies that we covered in the sentence completion videos, you can apply to vocabulary and context questions. Make up your own definition for the word in the question before looking at the answers provided. What I mean more specifically is, look back at the passage, find the word in the question, and come up with your own definition for how that word is being used and what it means in context in the passage. And finally, I'll repeat myself. For questions that ask about easy words, quote unquote, or words with which you're already familiar, the right answer will usually not be the normal definition of the word. Let's have a look at a practice question in the official SAT study guide. This one shows up on page 523 and it's question number 20. If you haven't read the passage on page 522 yet, please take a second, pause the video, and do so before we continue. So, number 20 on page 523 asks us this. In line 65, drive most nearly means. Well, drive is a very common word, and I'm pretty sure you know how to use it in a couple of different ways. But as I mentioned earlier, the right answer is probably not the normal definition of the word drive. Let's look back at line 65 and come up with our own interpretation of how this word is being used. If we look back at the passage, line 65 mentions a lack of ambition and drive. And that's really nice because the fact that we have the word ambition right before drive means that probably drive means something very similar to ambition. Let's get rid of some bad answers. I will get rid of A, B, and C. Notice that all of these words are definitions of drive that happen to not be correct for this particular passage. Answer A, propulsion, is very similar to driving a car. B, instinct. Here we're talking about our instinctual or natural drives, quote unquote. And C, I think it's kind of funny, campaign. This is like a food drive or a funding drive in a political campaign. All of these are alternative definitions of the word drive, and none of them fits in the particular context referenced by this question. So, we're down to D and E, vitality and momentum, and I bet you're right there with me. The better choice, the one that is more similar to the word ambition, is vitality. And therefore, answer D is the correct choice on this question. So that's a brief summary of vocabulary and context questions. Be sure to look for more of these throughout the SAT study guide. About 8% of all reading passage questions fall into the vocabulary and context category. So this is an important one to master. Keep studying. Thanks again for watching.